With this beginner's guide, you'll get all the necessary knowledge to master the challenges on the dark streets of Lies of P, while keeping everything as spoiler-free as possible. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So, without further ado, let's kick things off with Number 8. Best Starting Class The first decision you make in the game and the very first action is choosing your combat style. You'll have three options, balance, dexterity, and strength. If your preference leans towards wielding conventional swords or sizable weapons, the balance path suits you. Opt for the dexterity path if you like daggers, spears, or elegant rapiers. Lastly, go for strength if you want. <laughs> Shit. If you are new to Souls-like games, we recommend starting with the balance path and mastering regular swords to familiarize yourself with the game's mechanics. Once you feel confident, you can venture into the game's practice area to discover the combat style that aligns best with your preference. Next, we have Number 7. Enter your battles fully charged. Before you start fighting, you should be fully charged in two ways. First, you should always recharge your health with the help of pulse cells, which is basically your Estus Flask in this world. And secondly, make sure that you always have your weapon durability fully restored by the appropriate button on your system. And no, you don't need a blacksmith to do this. It is a must-have, especially before challenging boss fights. Number 6. Blocking pays off in Lies of P. There are two primary methods to avoid damage. Blocking and dodging. When you opt for blocking, you'll still take some damage, but it's significantly reduced with some chip damage to contend with. On the other hand, dodging grants complete immunity from damage, but it's less effective in this game as specific attacks can still connect and the distance covered is limited. Moreover, dodging consumes stamina, whereas blocking is a more rewarding strategy thanks to the guard recovery system, where you can regain health loss to chip damage by counterattacking promptly. Increasing your vitality improves this healing effect, making blocking a superior choice, especially for newcomers looking to grasp the game's mechanics and enemy patterns. Number 5. Benefit from Backstabs and Stagger System They are the hallmark of Souls-like games. That's why Liza P has implemented them as well. You can inflict significant harm upon foes who merely expose their backs to you without stealth. A brisk approach suffices. Be careful though, as this tactic often lures you into a trap with additional adversaries lurking nearby, ready to pounce. Another powerful combat mechanic is the Stagger System, a concept borrowed from Sekiro, but gaining traction in Souls-like games. As you engage foes, you accumulate Stagger, eventually manifesting as a white flashing bar above the health gauge. This signals the opportune moment to unleash a charged heavy attack. Successful execution is marked by a distinctive visual cue a vivid red display resembling three claw marks. This indicates the area you need to hit for a critical strike. Number four, Fable Arts and Special Attacks. Fable Arts are unique weapon-specific abilities. Take, for instance, our Puppet Saber Blade and Puppet Saber Handle. Each component of this weapon boasts a distinct special attack. For the Saber Blade, it's the Storm Slash. Executed by pressing the appropriate button, consuming your entire Fable Bar, this unleashes a special attack. Another special we can perform with this weapon is Concentrate. This grants a temporary attack boost, represented by a sword icon on the top left, enhancing your damage until the buff fades away. That's how Fable Arts work. Accumulate the blue energy by attacking foes, and once you've acquired enough, unleash your weapon's special abilities. Number 3. Use your preferred Legion Arms These Legion Arms are incredibly versatile attachments that can be mounted on Pinocchio's arm, allowing him to unleash a range of abilities from grappling wires to fiery and electric attacks. For example, use the grappling hook arm to disrupt enemy actions, pull distant enemies closer, or swing the left arm of steel to deliver a devastating blow that stops enemy attacks. These abilities add a layer of tactical depth to our hero's arsenal. Tactical nuke! Number 2. Perfect Guard is Key For those who prefer a daring approach, Perfect Guard is another cool feature during intense combat. This mechanic allows you to break up enemy weapons with a precisely timed block disarming your opponents. While their equipment will remain reasonably functional, their attacks will lose power and speed, giving you a significant advantage. It's a technique worth mastering quickly, but remember that executing a perfect guard will consume your stamina even if it doesn't cause any damage. And finally, we've got Number 1. Watch bosses' fury attacks and study their timing. Fury attacks are relatively uncommon, usually a boss or a mini-boss's special move. These strikes become more frequent when facing the big ones. 
While being unblockable, you can stop them with a perfect guard move. It is advisable to keep a safe distance, especially in boss fights, and carefully watch the Fury attacks and their timings to execute a perfect guard. And that's it with our Lies of P Beginner's Guide. Hopefully this will make your life a little easier. Feel free to come back to this whenever you need it. And if you want more content like this, hit the bell icon, visit our website, yourgames.tv, and follow us on Twitter at yourgtv. See you in the next one, ballers.